Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're taking a look at a Toshiba Satellite 1730 that I found being thrown out. The only problem is, the hinge is completely snapped, so I think it's time we try and fix it. Starting things off, I gave the surface a light cleaning with some eucalyptus oil on a damp cloth. Old laptops can be quite unsanitary, and given that I found this one being thrown out, who knows where it's been. Next, I gave the display surface a clean with lens cleaner combined with a paper towel. Now begins the disassembly. The screen of the Toshiba satellite is held together by four Phillips head screws that are hidden underneath little sticky covers. The bottom two screws were a little bit more difficult to remove due to the shattered plastic surrounding them. After some careful prying, the front and rear plastic panels fell right off. The display's backlight cable was connected directly to the rear panel and had to be removed. It turns out that the hinge itself was not actually damaged, however plastic surrounding it had broken away. Without the casing we get a good look at the panel beneath. I proceeded to remove the screws that had snapped off the plastic outer casing and had remained attached to the hinge assembly. The screws were held in place by a nut on the opposite side. I used my trusty pocket knife to grip the nut as I unscrewed the screw. Next, I attempted to superglue the nuts back onto the rear panel where they had snapped off from. I wanted to make sure I got them exactly aligned before I added some Q-Bond reinforcing powder. This is poured in place, then super glue is added to create a super strong hardened structure that should be able to withstand the stress of opening and closing the display. I built up several layers using the Cubon powder, followed by small amounts of super glue to hold the nuts in place better. To perhaps loosen the stiff hinges, I tried spraying some WD-40 on them. After some time letting the glue dry, I began to reassemble the display. I also applied small amounts of glue to every undamaged screw point to ensure that they did not break off in the future. While not perfectly done, the screen can now be opened without the worry of it breaking again. Thankfully, when powered up, the laptop screen still works fine. Sadly, the laptop is password locked, so I'll have to install a new version of Windows. So, now that we've got the hinge nice and strong, I think it's time we wipe the hard drive, install a new operating system, and see just what this machine is capable of. So, let's pop in the shiny install disk and get to work. I reformatted the 10GB IDE hard disk and began the installation. After about 40 minutes, the laptop booted into Windows XP for the first time. While this laptop was not originally designed to run Windows XP, the 700MHz Celeron processor combined with 128MB of PC100 RAM is definitely adequate. So, how well does it play games? Let's start off with Age of Empires 2. Creating a random match with two AI players was completely fine. Of course, Age of Empires isn't exactly a very taxing game. So, let's really test the 4 megabytes of graphics memory with a fully 3D game. Select your character. Let's get him. Sonic Adventure running at 640x480 is not a very good experience. While the simple 3D graphics are pleasant, they are simply too much for this laptop to handle. It even makes Sonic seem slow. No! Taking things back a bit, Microsoft Golf runs great and is a fun little golf game. Totally playable on the Toshiba satellite. After literally minutes of loading in, we are running LEGO Island 2. This is very playable, and the game runs fairly smooth with occasional slowdown. Taking things to a slightly more violent level, let's try Carmageddon. This 3D racing game runs absolutely fine on this laptop. I won't show you too much of this gory racing game since I don't want the video demonetized. Last of all, the classic Space Cadet pinball game, included with Windows XP, runs great. This really brings back a lot of memories as I played the heck out of this back when I was a bored child. 
An interesting feature of this laptop is the ability to play audio CDs while the laptop is turned off. Flicking this switch to the right will allow you to play, pause, and eject CDs that play through the internal speakers. Speaking of speakers, the stereo speakers on the palm rests are not very good. Something that is very good is definitely the keyboard. The keys are clicky and have a decent amount of travel. There is no trackpad on this laptop. Instead, you've got a little AccuPoint 2 pointing device, which you're either going to love or hate. I chose to use an external USB mouse throughout most of this video. Speaking of USB ports, it thankfully has two of them, along with an audio in and out, two PC card slots, a 56K modem, VGA, PS2, a 24x CD-ROM drive, as well as a 3.5-inch floppy. One of the main problems I'm having is actually getting this connected to the internet. I tried using Ethernet, but the little jack back here covered with plastic doesn't seem to connect, it could be a dummy port. I've also tried installing a little TP-Link Wi-Fi dongle, but sadly my network is far too modern for this laptop. I've also tried installing a PCMCIA Wi-Fi card, but that could also not connect to my network. So after 28 days, I'm going to be locked out of this version of Windows. So there we have it, a vintage Windows laptop from 2001. It's crazy to think that this laptop is nearly 20 years old. Now that I've repaired it, I hope it lasts for many more years to come. So there we have it, the Toshiba Satellite 1730. I'm actually a really big fan of this design, and now that the hinge is fixed, it's actually in pretty good condition. So thank you very much for watching, if you've liked what you've seen, definitely feel free to leave a like, and if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.